Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Sanket Pisat and welcome to the case discussion of endogyne training quiz number 17 which I had posted in the group. Uh, again for those of you who are not aware, endogyne training is our discussion group where we discuss pertinent daily life dilemmas in gynecological endoscopy and some surgical uh, techniques and tips and tricks to get over these problems. So in quiz number 17, I had posted that this is a 38 year old lady. She has presented with menorrhagia and intermenstrual bleeding since two years. She has also been trying to get pregnant without success. And this is the ultrasound picture. So you can see if you inspect the ultrasound picture that let me just draw it out for you. Those of you who are not clear about what this is. So this is the coronal view on a 3D ultrasound and this is one of the important tests that we will be uh, referring to time and again during our uh, discussion in various aspects of fertility enhancing surgery so as you can see over here this is the this of course from here to here is the cervix this is the external contour of the uterus so if you have to follow this line you can go here this is the external contour of the uterus so that you can see that it's a good fundus and then coming down it goes all the way up till here. Then we come to the endometrial cavity and the endometrial cavity is over here so we start from here. This is the cervical canal and this would this is the isthmus then moving on to the fundus and this is the cornum on one side that's the fundus the other side and down so that's how the entire picture will look like this will be the entry of the um, entry point of the cervical canal and the internal loss etc all that will be here now what we are trying to delineate is this area so you can see someone has already marked out the area on the uh, uh, 3d ultrasound report and you can see this is the fibroid which has been marked out so how do i know or why do i say that it is a fibroid you can see that it has a hypo it is a hypoechoic or a isoechoic structure so whenever you see a space occupying lesion which is either hypo or isoechoic one can be reasonably sure that this is going to be a fibroid maybe i'll change the color this is going to be a fibroid conversely if one sees a hyperechoic structure, that means there is more refractility or that is a white structure, then you can be sure that we are talking about a polyp. So a hypoechoic is a fibroid and hyperechoic is a polyp. And if you see over here, I can clearly see these hypoechoic areas all inside the mass. And so my diagnosis in this case is going to be that this is a submucous myoma. Let's also let's see the responses now one by one and what everyone has. So most people 64% people have said that it is indeed a fibroid. Some people have said that it is a polyp and that is the exact confusion that we are uh, wanting to get rid of when we look at this particular image. So in this case at least one can be sure that it is a fibroid and not a polyp because it is clearly hypoechoic. Then coming to does she need hysteroscopy or is conservative management possible and most people have opted for surgery which I think is correct regardless of whether it is a fibroid or a polyp if the patient is symptomatic or even if she is asymptomatic but desires fertility any space occupying lesion inside the endometrial cavity must be tackled before the patient attempts pregnancy and if she is having menorrhagia then all the more reason. If surgery would you use scissors or resectoscope? So resectoscope and cautery would be the correct answer simply because removing a fibroid by scissor would be very difficult or almost impossible. And as the size of the mass starts growing even for polyps, one finds that for larger polyps it is a little easier to tackle them by resectoscope as compared to scissor. The only thing we have to be careful about is to not damage the basal endometrial layer but as long as you are within the cavity and not damaging the surrounding endometrium I think that should be perfectly fine. This is the interesting one what difficulty do you expect during surgery so most people have said perforation 
and then the second in line is difficulty in visualization and then I think the third in line is bleeding and the fourth one is fluid overload and a very small patient percentage of people so seven people have said I think that there is no difficulty so personally I would go with this one no difficulty and the reason I will tell you if we go down and let's look at the image one more time so if you look at the image over here then we can see that in this image you can see that this type of fibroid the fibroid which has been shown over here this fibroid seems to be a completely intra cavitary fibroid okay so if this is the wall if this is the outline of the sorry about that if this is the outline of the wall then this is the fibroid which is a completely intra cavitary fibroid over here it is completely located within the endometrial cavity okay and if you look at the wall outside it then you can see that clearly you have a good thickness of myometrium which is above it so with this situation the possibility of perforation seems very less because you will have a good uh, myometrial rim the possibility of perforation would be more had this fibroid been located somewhere over here or somewhere at this level where the possibility of perforation would have been a little higher. So because the mass is intracavitary the possibility of uh, perforation seems to be less. Second is bleeding. Yes, bleeding can of course happen in case of a submucous myoma resection but in this particular case I would not expect there to be any significant amount of bleeding. So I would not take perforation or bleeding or even fluid overload for that matter is more common in cases of these fibroids which are deeper in location. So this particular case seems to be a straightforward case where the fibroid is entirely within the cavity and should come out easily. The only problem that one can expect is sometimes in submucous myomas because of the increased intrauterine pressure. So when you distend the uterine cavity with pressure of saline that is pushed from below, this saline can sometimes push the fibroid outside and because this fibroid gets pushed outside, this fibroid which should actually be over here when one actually does the surgery is seen to be something like this. So falsely a type 0 fibroid starts looking like a type 2 or a type 3 fibroid. So how, what are the various ways of converting this type 2 or type 3 fibroid back to a type 0 fibroid which will be visualized easily and one which will be able to be resected easily without any risk of complication. So that is what we are going to look at in the video which I am going to post next in the group. Again for those of you who have not yet joined, please uh, visit www.endogynetraining.com and uh, you will find the link there to join our WhatsApp group and you can also join the group to take part in the daily discussion. So thank you very much and uh, please watch out for the video that I am going to post next which shows this very surgery and the way that it has been performed.